I'm going to uh, discuss the various positions of the cannoneers you see behind me and their respective requirements and duties in the performance of loading and firing the weapon. After that, we'll do a dry run of how we fire the weapon using just the friction primer, which is the device that actually makes the cannon go off, and you'll hear a little pop. Following that, we will actually demonstrate the firing with a round in there. Not a live round, just powder. Uh, and we'll make sure you all know that's happening so you're prepared and ready for that. Uh, basically, so I'll go into the demonstration of who, who the uh, people are and what their duties are. Cannoneer number one. You'll see the position of number one there. He carries a long pole. On one end is a sponge. The requirement for the sponge is to prior to and after every round to make sure that moist sponge goes down the barrel to extinguish any embers of powder that is left in the barrel. Today we use a little more safety precaution by using aluminum foil wrapped around the charge to prevent anything going off from a hot ember. However, back in the time of the Civil War, it was a cloth material bag. And you can imagine what happens when you put a cloth bag down, when you've got hot embers burning down in there, you get a premature explosion. Second, on the uh, <clears throat> other end of that pole is the rammer. He uses that part of the pole to actually place the powder down in the barrel and down the breech to the bottom. And then any shell that they may be using, depending on the requirement, that goes down in after or part of the powder going down into the barrel. He must secure it in the breech tightly so they can properly fire off. Position number two. You notice he's also carrying a pole. A little worm on there. He has two primary duties. First is to receive the powder, comes in from the caisson and the shell, and place it into the barrel. His second duty, using that pole, if you get a round in there that, as our ranger said, goes in backwards or is a misfire and they can't get it to refire, he's required to take that worm, place it down the barrel, see if he can engage the shell or the powder bag and remove it so that they can theoretically get back to refire. Sometimes that doesn't work and the artillery piece is useless at that point. Position number three. Position number three has two requirements. First, holding in his hand is known as a vent pick. At the breech of the gun is a small hole. He takes that pick, places it in the hole, to puncture the powder bag. Once that powder bag's punctured, it now is exposed so that it can be ignited. His second duty is with a thumb stall. He wraps a piece of leather around his thumb to prevent burning, and he places it on top of that vent hole during the time when number one is taking the sponger or the rammer down the barrel. This is to prevent airflow from going up and down that barrel and fanning in the embers that is down in there. Position number three. Our, excuse me, four. <laughs> I'm losing numbers. It's until the sun is really getting to me. Uh, position number four is, has a cord in his hand. He also carries in his pouch on his side the friction primer, which is a small tube with a wire inside. It is hooked to that cord, known as a lanyard. It is stretched out once the friction primer is hooked to it, that it goes into the vent. He stretches out, and he gets the fun part of this job. When he pulls it under command, it goes off. Position number five, the gentleman there with the pouch. It is his responsibility to go from the caisson to the gun and back, picking up the ammunition as needed and as been required. Position number six, and sometimes we call him six and seven because we're short of pin and ear today. They actually stand at the caisson and based on the orders they receive, some of the shells require a fuse because they explode 
either in the air or in the ground, near the ground when fired. And they require a fuse, <clears throat> depending on the distance of how they're firing, to actually cut that fuse based on a chart that's located on the lid of the caisson. Once they have that fuse installed, they pass the ammunition on to number five to distribute. The other gentleman, that's me, is the gunner. My responsibility is to make sure that I check out the distance, where we're firing, select the ammunition required, and make sure that the commands are given so that each one of the gentlemen do their required duties. And in fact, during the Civil War, as you'll see when we do the demonstration, it's almost like they're dancing into their positions. In fact, it was referred to as the cannoneer's dance. So, with anything else, uh, after we finish the firing, if you give us about a 30 seconds to a minute to make sure that uh, we have secured the priests properly, uh, you're uh, invited to come down, ask any questions, look the cannon over. We do ask you to stay away from the front end of the muzzle in case we left something down there to make a little fireworks and sparks for you. Thank you. Mine's on the movie setting.
on uh, Fred. Good. Yeah. Nice and Two months pay, maybe. Yes. Along with paying for clothes and any right, of that right. kind of thing. Own cloth. You would cover yourself with both blankets, both of you, and then you would take the other ground cloth and you would put it over top of you to keep the dew off or the snow that might be falling. Well, get, you need the, yeah, I could say I was riding a horse. Yeah. Well, that too. Just ride. What this is, is it flips up like that, and usually what it has, and I've taken mine off so I wouldn't lose it, is it's got a little thing that would slide up and down. You see the numbers on there? Yeah. All right. It's got numbers on there that would allow me to judge yardage. So when you'd look through that and you'd adjust your yardage on that little slide, you would basically tip your gun to get your sight in line with it. So that's basically the rear sight. And it turns up so that you can shoot farther than 50 yards. <laughs>